like I do collaborations, I play video games, I cover culture, lifestyle, things of that nature, because I, I want to ensure that like uh, people don't have this like set image of me as this person with these ideals that can be very easily, I think, and used against you. And, and you can be presented with, uh, you can be presented in a way to an audience that is uninitiated. Also, I don't know how I, I, I once I realized it's a Philip Morris on brand, I was like, ah, eh, maybe not the best idea. So are they basically like skull for the 21st century? Do you have to spit? Or no, no, not that? at all. So it's like, it's, it's not like chewing tobacco or anything. It's just, it's basically just pure nicotine. <laughs> Okay. I um, grew up in the South, so... Oh no, I, I used to I used to chew and smoke. So nicotine gum helped me no Cheers. longer be addicted. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't... I haven't smoked in years. We're gonna need you to be the voice of the left in media for many years, so you should keep going. Yeah. Mm. If I make it that far, we'll see. Oh man. So, um, so I, I thought that the focus of today's topics were going to be about mostly like masculinity and the presentation of masculinity. I don't mind if we go completely outside of that. I have no issues with that. I also have no issues with like freestyling in general. I, I mean, that's what I do best. That's the only thing I do usually. So this is like the way I see it. It's no different than any other live stream that I would do. Buckets we'll kind of touch on, and um, one will sort of be a little about your career and what you do and yeah. on Twitch, because I know a lot of students are interested in that, right? And it's not yeah. something they learn much about at university, because yeah. you know, as I was telling David, most of my colleagues didn't even know what Twitch was, right? So it's not like they're getting taught much here, except in the comm school. So we'll do that a little bit, and I would like to talk about politics some because. Um, you're good at that, and you know, USC had a, a really um, fractious, tense encampment breakdown last year, yeah. and the students were treated very badly this summer, right, that were arrested by the university, and all these fences you see, those were not here. Yeah, I noticed that uh, even, like, entering, like, I've been to USC campus before. Yeah. I never i never had to like go through you know like the id it's, checking process before so so it's i think you know we should dive into things you've been talking about for a long time i've talked to several students in the last few weeks who young women who found your stream because of your gossip content over the last year, right? Who didn't yeah. know you before, right? But were told by people that you were someone they could learn about the history of the region from. Mm -hmm. right? So some of them will be here, right? So um, Hell yeah. And I um, am part of the Palestine Justice Faculty Group. I've been BDS for 12 years, 14 years, right? So um, this is an opportunity for us to have a little bit of conversation about Palestine that doesn't happen very yeah. often, if you're comfortable. No, I'm totally comfortable about that. No, I was just uh, trying to see what, yeah, like, I just don't want to, so, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I, the only reason why I asked is so, because I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to ruffle any feathers or anything like that. If the conversation is supposed to be focused on like masculinity, I'm fine with doing that, but I'm more and than yeah, comfortable. I want to talk about too. That's what our project studies, I study hate online. Yeah. Um, I've talked to many, many young men, one who will be here to meet you tonight that we're working on the short doc with, mm -hmm. who have exited far right rabbit holes because of you, right? Like that's not it's amazing. just one person, you know, it's like just in our tiny sample that's many people. Yeah. Right? So you offer like this really fantastic model of masculinity that is like growing. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Inez is our media producer extraordinaire who is a journalist who worked for Vice and CNN and, and works with CBS. Our, CBS. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hell yeah. Uh, there's a camera right there. We're live streaming it already, just so you know. That's totally expected. Okay. Just let, you know, nice. so you don't feel sight. Yeah. Thank you. Blindsided. What's up, guys? Hello. 
Is it okay if we ask you like two questions really quick? Yeah, for sure. Oh, is this for like the USC? Uh... Yes. Okay, student journalist. Let's student do it. Journalist. Should you want me to stand? Uh, it's okay. Well, whatever you want. Whatever you want to do. Sorry. All right. March is going to get on my camera. <laughs> All right. Hello. So, Hassan Piker, what does Hassan Piker mean to you? Hassan Piker? <laughs> what does it mean to me? God, just a guy trying to live every day, one step at a time, do the right thing. Fire. We also want to ask, what's a masculine object? A masculine object? Damn, immediately my mind went Freud. Like, immediately I was thinking, like, what's the most phallic figure that I can think of? Um, cigar, eggplant, things like that. But I think, um, you know what a masculine object is? The, the weight belt that I use when I'm deadlifting. Because it braces my core, it's protective, uh, but it's necessary. That's a masculine object for me. That's a good answer. Do you have any other questions, guys? Maybe last question. How do you define masculinity? Oh, how do you define masculinity? Oh, this is a tough one. How do I define masculinity? It's just, I think a lot of people consider uh, traits such as confidence. Like, they mistake confidence for masculinity, and that's pretty much it. I, um, I don't really put a lot of thought into it, ironically enough, even though the, today's talks are going to be about masculinity. Uh, but for me, I think it's, it's basically uh, being the best version of yourself and, and being a confident human being. Fire. Okay. Thanks, everybody. We good? Yeah. All right. Awesome. But Thank it's you. not... Uh, nice to meet you. It's not necessarily just a masculine trait, though, which I guess we'll talk about today. Yeah, we will. Oh, oh you wanted Dane, to keep going. Dane um, and Sophie and Hi. Danny Austin Yana all are part of Reclaim, which is our project that's kind of thinking about new models for masculinity. So that's how we, you know you're my syllabus tomorrow. Oh, wow. Okay. Like I'm, I'm being taught in college courses. You that's are crazy. You being taught in college courses. That's crazy. In my men and masculinity All right, let me ask you, what do you think masculinity is? Okay. Oh, okay. I really wasn't expecting something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead. I don't know. I've in asked. front of your teacher too. You're cooked. Yeah. <laughs> you got. You're about to get graded on this. Dave yeah, knows that I love him, so it's fine. yeah. I guess I've had to ask that question to so many people that like. I just feel like anything that I thought was like an objective definition has just sort of gone away because I feel like I get like every answer to the point where like masculinity is just like anything, and like some people say like oh masculinity is like being strong, being like being a manly man, protecting your family, and some people are just like oh masculinity is like being a good person. So I just feel like it's like almost meaningless at this point. Cause like- That's how I feel about it. Yeah, it's just like a universal. It's just like whatever is good is masculine. I think that's why I focus more on like the, the misappropriation of the term masculinity, like, or the way that people call themselves like alpha, alpha men. It's usually just a, it's usually just a catch all term, but what they technically mean is like being confident. And it's ironic because like people that are can, like people that consider themselves as are anything but confident. And I think that most of the time they try to, to masquerade as this like macho figure, what they think is like supposed to be this masculine beacon. And um, they're usually for their own personal insecurities. In my experience, that's what I've found. And I, I definitely understand that too given, you know, I mean, I was a young boy at one point in my life as well. I'm 33, I'm old now. But, um, you know, I, I definitely uh, found myself in the throes of like portraying myself as like what I thought were masculine figures in media and like resembling those traits that I thought were cool and thinking that they were masculine. So I definitely understand how people can be susceptible to that, especially young men. Yeah. Awesome. I wanted to ask, like, what do you think young boys, like young men who are on the internet, like, what should they do or what should they know about, like, as they learn about themselves and masculinity and, like, as they go through those teenage years? Um, don't trust anybody that presents themselves as, like, a, as a, if you're 14 and you think, wow, this guy has cool cars, he's always surrounded by scantily clad women, he is such a, he's so alpha, I want to be just like him. Know that that's a trap. If a whole ass adult is portraying himself that way, then they're for severe and that they're trying to project an image of what you consider to be success. And you shouldn't be duped by that. You should be your own person instead. 
What are the demographics of your audience right now, and how do you view kind of your role as this messenger, as this person to them? Um, we do a census every year. I don't know what the exact numbers are. I keep forgetting, but I think it's it's mostly it's predominantly white men uh, that are uh, thirty, like around thirty, thirty plus, or you know, twenty to thirty-five, let's say. And yeah, <laughs> him <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, we have, I think, what. Chat, what's the percentage of women in my community? It depends on the platform. It's 67% men, 24% women, 8% non-binary. And it's also primarily like, yeah, 25 to 36. Yeah, 25 to 35 is like the, the most, the, the largest demo, which is interesting because like my demographics have aged as I have aged. Because like I looked at it, like we've been running the census every year since 2020 consistently. And over the four years, like the demographic is also just aged four years in to like understand. different brackets. Well, Israel has a right but, to the... um, yeah, that's the that's the dynamic. It's like quarter women, 8% non-binary, and then the rest is men. I bet there are more women on Insta. Checking out your outfit every day. I think there were in the past. It's actually interesting. Before I got on Twitch... I was I still had like somewhat of a social media presence when I was on the Young Turks and back then my audience was 75% women 25% men on Instagram and when I got on Twitch I can check it right now but when I got on Twitch it went to 50 50 so I don't even know it might even be like majority men now but we'll see let's take a look how do I even I think find you're 50 50 on Insta. I think it might be David would know better let's see insights How do I find that? Overview? Mm -hmm. In the last seven days. I don't really post that much either anymore on my Instagram, but. So are you posting in the morning all of those story updates, or is that oh, your that's army? Yeah. That's oh, no, I, I do that, yeah. But that's just like, yeah, I use the story function more, I think. Who is there? I didn't get that. Did you try again? Who is there um, filming you work out every morning? Thank you. Oh, I do that myself. I just like, I just prop it up. We have a we have an influencer beam uh -oh. on the at the gym that I work out at. And thank you so much. oh, thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah. Are you all going out to the house? Yeah, we have okay. to get some shots outside. Okay, let's do. Um, and yes. Yes. Are you um yes. I'm here. set up for questions. the questions? Oh, it's literally 50-50. It's 51.5 men, 48.4% women. Damn, you nailed it. That's your job, right? Yeah. YouTube's a little different too, but Twitch is the, the male-dominated one. Yeah. YouTube's a little bit more in the middle. Interesting. I think it's very platform-centered for sure. Like, Twitch is an overwhelmingly male dominated platform. The old people watch you on YouTube because yeah. Twitch hurts my brain. <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot, but like actually I, I have a I have a relatively young audience on YouTube as well because YouTube's audience skews younger. So it balances itself out. I I remember talking to YouTube a while ago where they were like uh, they were telling me that I have the, the youngest uh, demographic overall of any kind of political content on the entire platform. I yeah. like the piece you put together really quickly after the New York Times dropped the story about young men and women drifting farther apart politically. You know, when you package that on YouTube, that's a really tight, great episode that yeah. kind of gives some explanation for that. And well, I, the manosphere. The way I work is I try to make it so that my commentary already is like as as quickly packaged as possible, as like neatly, uh, you know, I try to cover stories with that in mind. Who, I mean, do you have like a small team that just cuts the stream down yeah. to the YouTube kind of chunk every night? Yeah. It's like um, a speedy operation. I mean, yeah. Stuff comes up. And it's like pretty, like I said, it's just, uh, I try to, I try to make it as like, uh, as, as fast paced as possible. So it's like already packaged with like as, m as limited amount of editing as possible. And the only thing I, I uh, ask of my editors usually is to just like add, because I pull data a lot from my head 
and it's good that they uh, will go and find the data and just like slap it on there um, so that there is like, you know, so that it's sourced adequately. How much time do you have to spend, how do you even find, I'll probably ask you this outside too, but how do you even find time to read as much as you must have to? to uh, I just, I don't know. I, that's Everything I do is like, everything I do basically, every moment of my life is geared towards it. So that's how I that's how I'm able to keep up with it. Like I'm I'm like a like an information sponge. You could actually be a professor because we have no work life balance either. We're just not yeah. interesting, right? So you know that like everything's thinking about your work all the time, right? That's that's what we do. Yeah. But we have fantastic students. Well, now that you're now that you're not on Twitter as much, I think it's been easier. Back in the Twitter heydays, I feel like it was nonstop. What, what do you mean? Like, we'd go to dinner or something, or you'd be at dinner with people. Oh, and yeah. You'd have to, like, be checking Twitter. Like, yeah, I used to. It's breaking and everything. Yeah, I definitely feel like, I mean, I, I've done a decent job of, like, keeping up with stuff, even outside of Twitter now, because I deleted it from my phone. But, like, Twitter definitely was a really solid way for me to keep up with everything that's going on. Um, back in the day, but I have I've just stopped going on Twitter uh, unless I'm on stream. Like, like my husband had already bought a Tesla that I have to drive right now because I gave my son my old car, and we had to put a bumper sticker on it that said, "We bought this before we knew what a dickhead he was." Right? Exactly. <laughs> that's actually on the, yeah. that's on the bumper sticker. <laughs> that is that's a bumper amazing. sticker because I just stand like comfortably right around in a Tesla. Yeah. Speaking of toxic masculinity. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I can't afford a Porsche. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of great EVs now, though, and that are affordable and reliable, I'm luckily. To what I should get. I, like, the Kia 6. The Kias are pretty solid. And then the Ionic, which is kind of goofy looking, but yeah. I, I might be able to work that. You don't I was going to also explain to Marsh, you should feel free to keep the stream camera just on the side. Yeah, I was, well, it's tough. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah. I'm kidding, but I, um, I am not the... the uh, immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to, you know, but sometimes it breaks. It's okay. I mean, I'm not. I'm not um, Is he Libertian? I have a nephew who I'm in a game so much credibility with for like having met Hassan Piper. Hell yeah. <laughs> and my son will be in the front row because he's also I feel like you get that a, lot. a huge fan. I do get that, yeah, for sure. Um, that's great. Your your W auntie. Your W aunt. The, uh, one of the um, young men you'll meet tonight we're doing a short doc with. And he spoke in the doc very eloquently about your influence on him. So he's, That's nice. he came up from Fullerton to meet you. He's not a USC student. He's very excited. That's sick. Yeah, I was going to say, too, I was just initially a report on the election, and I went to a Trump town hall. And about, like, thinking, I'm interested to hear, I guess, how you view the world being able to de-radicalize some people. And, these people, especially from places like Michigan, that are economy, economy, and I feel like we all know the election is such big stakes, so much more than that. Yeah, but I also don't necessarily think that like Trump is good on the economy. That's the other aspect of this. Like, I mean, I'm not exactly too fond of the Democratic Party either, but uh, in terms of like de-radicalizing these people, I think that. Um, I think that overall, the number one thing is is that there needs to be like a level of charitability. So if they approach the conversation with like inherent hostility, it's going to be pretty difficult. Like people make up their minds about you, they put you in a neat little confine, neat little box, and they go, "Oh no, this is a this is a liberal. Like this is uh, this person has these opinions, right?" So I try to. I try to broaden the kinds of content that I make for that reason. Like I do collaborations, I play video games, I cover culture, lifestyle, things of that nature, because I, I want to ensure that like uh, people don't have this like set image of me as this person with these ideals that can be very easily, I think, and used against you. 
and and you can be presented with uh, you can be presented in a way to an audience that is uninitiated uh, in a way that like uh, does not correspond to your worldview at all. So I think that's important. And I and when I'm around people with different opinions, and I am around people with different perspectives all the time, regardless of the eight hours that I'm you know spending online, I also try to spend as much time possible as possible in the real world. Um, you know, I try to I try to approach them where they're at. I try to understand where they're coming from and communicate to their desires, which is ironic because like that's kind of what I want the Democratic Party to do as well as a as a more successful counterbalance against growing that I see within the Republican Party. And uh, you know, they fail to do that on every front, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Yeah. It's very disappointing. Gaming spaces are, gaming spaces are, I think, too focused on, on, on women being in video games right now to, to focus on anything else. They probably don't even know that their election is coming up. They're just, they're too predisposed with woke ruining video games, which is a direct rehash of like the Gamergate stuff that used to happen way back in the day. Yeah. DEI. Critical race theory. Yeah. Pronouns, DEI, woke, that kind of stuff. Chat, stop asking March to do emotes <laughs> that I will not be saying. So, March, how much are you? Are you every day? With <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> waiting for your answer, bro. Am I videos? No. 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 It depends on. If we travel, then yes. It's like the podcast <laughs> weekly. Yeah. And then if we travel, it's every day. Yeah. Okay. He hates it. No, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I whip him regularly. That's fine. I like it. Yeah. Okay. He's... <laughs> I feel like the basketball game has improved over the last oh, wow. six months or so. Wow, you <laughs> are... Yeah. You just talked about the dream gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I'm getting better every day. I can, I can dunk now, which is good. I gotta, I, I gotta get even better. Honestly, there's a lot. You're, you're kind of been, like buff to play basketball, right? Like I'm a little big. I'm definitely a little too big. I am six feet tall, and I'm the shortest person in my family. So my brother and dad were both six eight, and my dad went to college because he was six foot eight. His dad had been a coal miner, and um, they're very thin, right? So, they didn't ball, or they had to have. My dad did. He was, yeah. he was a play. He wouldn't have gone to college if he didn't play basketball. Yeah. It was a, That's a waste. If you're six eight, oh, yeah. you know, it's just a waste of of height right there. But I bet he didn't weigh a hundred and eighty pounds. You know, when he went to college, he was under that, I guess. But yeah, it's like Wemby. He's eating good now, though. Um. Okay. Like Baron Trump, exactly, Chad. <laughs> he's Slovenian too. It's such a waste. He's gonna. He's going to NYU. He's gonna be a lib. He's gonna be a lib by his like second year. He's gonna. He's gonna fall in love with a with a uh, emperor with a septum ring, and come out of that process like reading Kurt Vonnegut or whatever. He, he's gonna get woke. Vonnegut would take you to woke, but maybe. It's the wokest people I know have Kurt Vonnegut tattoos, like Lowell Overruled. Yeah, who's going to be bisexual? Um, what time should we put the camera over there, you think? I don't know. Is he, is he walking so if on the stage? So if we start in 20, then... Probably going, yeah, I mean, start in the next five, ten, going up there and setting it up. They opened doors about seven minutes ago, so the students will be filing in now. Okay. So, so you either wait for them all to come in and then you go after, or you go now if you need extra stuff. I'm just trying to decrease the amount of downtime where the camera is posted over there and 
like there's like no screen around the camera, you know? Did you figure out how we're gonna do the um, audio? So that's the thing. I'm gonna bring both the off mics. Okay. Um, as like a fail safe, if everything just does not work, I'm gonna put them on you and we'll do that. But they have reassured me that like, we'll just jack it straight into the camera and then it should just work like the handheld mics that they give you and stuff. That sounds crazy. I know, I know. But I like, don't know how that's gonna work, but this is like, I mean, this is this is where the, the media... And that's you and that chamber? I'm actually okay. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. This way I'm more nimble if anybody needs to. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. I, no, I no, I'm sorry. I've been saying, I've been totally saying old. Totally okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So yeah, we have the failsafe. So Hi. chat, fair warning, there might be Good. some scuffed audio yeah. at some point. Good. Yeah. Are you so worried, bro? I don't know why I'm so worried. I don't know. There you still. We'll be put some out on the tables, so it'll be there when we go out. And then we can... They. Have you ever seen a powering <laughs> in a can? Mm-mm. No. That is wild. Chat oh, deserves sugar. less, March. Well, One of them that one's zero, zero sugar. Yeah. So, but I've just never seen it in a can. <clears throat> Oh, it's the white monster energy. That's the boomer drink of choice. That's what I. So maybe I should have it. That's that's what I drink all the time. So energy drink just means it's full of caffeine. Mm. Yes. Oh yeah. I probably don't need any caffeine at this point. White monster is the best monster. I agree. Okay, I chose a walkout song. What, can it be a Can it be a YouTube song? It's not on Spotify. Is it the chair, Is it the the song? No, no, no. It's it's not. <laughs> it's gonna be. Um, Thank you, USA. <laughs> which is uh from. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Do you love Sosa? No, no. Thank you, USA. You are my best friend by Armand Miftari. And there's a music video, too. You can play that as well if you want to. Yeah, send me the video. I'm going to talk to you. Were they shooting outside some, too, with the students? Yes. Can they beam the music video to the main... Like to the projector? Yeah. Maybe. Is that possible? It's going to shoot outside, too. Send me the link right now. I did. I'll go find them. I think other David. Or whoever, yeah, because I think what? he was running production, right? Um, I don't know if they'll be able to do a new song now, but we could ask David. Yeah, you want yeah, to text him? Let me go find. I thought there was floating around out there. Because they have a they have um a playlist that they set up. Hind Hall too? No, I'm not coming out to Macklemore, dude. I'm coming out to my goat Armin Miftari. The Albanian legend. This is a very pro NATO song. Yeah. It mentions Bill Clinton by name and, and Tony Blair. Don't worry, it's not problematic. I'm, I'm not worried about it. Okay, I just want to make sure. Uh, you can't just pick Chapel. I mean, that's the. That's the expected one. So also tell me how, like, like, are you, is somebody feeding you things from the chat all out? You're just no. able to multitask. No, I'm, I'm, I'm locked in. Yourself. Wait, he's scanning the chat. Right? I'm the one scanning the chat. I yeah. You could, like, just do that for eight hours a day. Yeah, it's not good. You it's pretty fried. I do get fried by the end of it, for sure. I was chairing my department when that happened. We'd be in Zoom eight or ten hours a day, and I just wanted to lay on the floor after that. It was like focusing on the screen that much is intense. So you could keep up with the chats when they're scrolling by at like a thousand miles an hour because they go fast. You can uh, scroll through it and kind of pause it, basically. Okay, I, lo- I'm, I told David to ask for Feminomenon by Chavalron. I feel like that's more apt. That's what I, I used on my post about Yeah. 
What's up? I use that on my post-it. Oh hell yeah. I think that's the that's the that's the move. Uh, that's my know. that's what my chat wants to do as well. Damn, there's a hell of people in here going, no, failed, but way more people saying let's go. Oh wow. Yes, of course. I also, we have a bunch of posters, but you have one of those if you don't have enough Hassan in your life. <laughs> Chad, don't, don't, listen, I, I still am firmly committed to uh, Albania, okay? Make no mistake. Are you polling it? I don't, I don't see it on my mobile. So I'm also going to write an academic article about you. I already wrote a little bit about you for a book that's coming out in the spring. Mm -hmm. So if I sent questions to David, would you answer some? For yeah. Me? Okay. You'll become, you know, a standard in curricula all over the the country. As soon as Hell you yeah. Writing articles about you. There's a. I think there was someone who did a dissertation on like politics and streaming. There's been a couple at this point, well, which is. One of the students I work with, who's a PhD student at Simon Fraser in Vancouver, wrote a lot about the far right manosphere, but he also writes about the counter, and so he, he writes some about you too. So yeah. I mean, there's quite a bit popping up out there now. Yeah. I um. It's been interesting just to see how students who are college age right now, who are probably a little bit below your core demo, respond to what you're doing. I think you're like, able to speak to young men who are maybe 13 or 14 in a way, because you kind of could communicate a broness that like some left political streamers can't. So yeah. you're not, it, you feel like a role model of some kind, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just who I am organically. I think that's what it is. It's not like I'm not putting on a front, right? And I think that it just kind of happened to work that way. Like, these are my genuine opinions, and this is who I am. Uh, you, I mean, you seem genuinely kind, which, you know, like, I keep waiting for it to be revealed to not be true, maybe, because, you know, you, I study celebrity, and there's usually a, a pretty big gap between a persona and a real-life person, right? But I was so impressed with your mannerisms when they were kicking you out of the DNC. You were, like, incredibly... Um, Gracious, right? Well, I mean, I was. Like your mama raised you well. Well, I, for sure, I think she definitely did. But also, I think that uh, it was because I was like, I was already excited at the opportunity. Like, I don't take it for granted. You know what I mean? I, I, I think, like, I don't have a, a sense of entitlement about it. Uh -huh. Where, like, I, I know what I present and I know what like value I bring. But so I know. You know, I know the value that I present, uh, but I that doesn't mean that like I'm expecting other people to be aware of it. So I I basically took every moment that they gave me at the DNC as like a benefit, as a positive. You know, I we had already we were what are you playing right now? We were already setting up as like uh, we I basically had a setup at the hotel room, knowing full well that like. I was not even going to have a space to stream out of inside of the DNC. So I was super stoked at the opportunity to begin with. So I, even when that was taken away, it didn't change that dynamic for me at all. It was, I was still like very excited. And you were so, I mean, you were really gracious, right? There was no diva there. No, no. It was very impressive. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I'm, I'm lugging, I'm lugging my remote setup around myself. So it's not like. We meet like a lot of, because I'm in the cinema school, I meet a lot of folks, right? And um, a lot of them aren't people you're going to want to hang out with, right? You know, yeah. There's a lot of like, um, entitlement. But I think as far as like me not being different um, from the way I present myself on camera is that like with Twitch streaming in particular, it's virtually impossible to present a false front because you're literally live for eight to 10 hours a day at, you know, I, I think. it's true of a lot of 
lot of other streamers or I think like uh, if you're not limiting if you're not limiting your interactions if you're not like maybe it might be a little different if you're like playing a video game or something but like the way I uh, you know I, I talk about real news and, and world events and also beyond that I'm constantly engaging with people in the chat like I don't think I'd be able to present myself as like a different person than who I am I don't think anyone is that good at like at acting in general but but yeah there is definitely a level of like authenticity that the platform automatically provides by the very nature of the medium Twitch you think in particular? Yeah it's just like live streaming in particular for sure I, I, a lot of time looking at the far right men in the far right online because that's how the lab work I'm doing with students now where that came out of right and they feel completely artificial to me like there's you know the Andrew Tate's and even Jordan Peterson. But Andrew Tate doesn't do like eight hours of live streaming he's very limited in his like the way that he presents itself to the outside world is like very manicured yeah there is no like he will do a guest slot every now and then on someone else's live stream or i think he has his own live streams as well but those are like an hour long yeah. they're they're responding to questions that they're fielding from their audience and i think you have the capacity to present yourself a certain way uh and and you know leave a lot of uh, leave a lot of the other aspects of your life uh, a secret if you choose to do so um, I've thought about this a lot like I because I used to always wonder like why is it that uh, why is it that like certain youtubers even for example get like a lot of praise whereas uh, uh, even if they haven't really done much in any direction in terms of political activism uh, but like people are hypercritical of everything I do and it was definitely it sounds really like envious but in some ways it was and and I think it's because like if you are not exposing yourself uh, in in all of your you know even your worst moments emotional moments angry moments depressed moments uh, every single day for eight to ten hours like you can you can create the best version of yourself for your audience even in avenues where or even in mediums like YouTube that are significantly more personable than celebrities I think celebrities like real celebrities not yeah. influencers yeah. I think they are uh, th that's like the final stage of that right like people they drip feed especially with like k-pop yeah. idols like they drip feed personal uh, like they drip feed their personalities but I think every single thing is like calculated specifically to invoke this like parasocial dynamic and they are able to present themselves as deities almost because every step that they take is completely manicured and if something is out of step or out of line with like the persona or the character that they've cultivated they have you know millions of dollars of PR working against that whether it be to like silence uh, you know negative articles or whether it be to flood the market with positive PR immediately after something comes out about them uh, whereas I don't think twitch streamers have that or youtubers have that but push streamers definitely are in the lowest rung of entertainment in in that in that capacity where you're just you can't not be yourself I mean, one of the things I'll probably want to talk to you about on the stage is a little, a little bit is something I heard you say um, about how you consider yourself to be in a kind of reverse parasocial relationship, and I found that super intriguing. So I'll probably ask you about that. Yeah, I can talk about that. Get out there a little bit because I thought um, that actually explained in some ways things that feel a little bit different about you, maybe because of your ubiquity, because you're so much online than some of the other streaming personalities that you know I've um, spent some time looking at. So. Yeah. So, um, do you want to be alone for a little few minutes before? Or you so I got to pee real quick. Uh, we need to. I need to find somebody who can.
tell me where you could do that. Because oh. there's not a bathroom back here. Yeah. So uh, you know I'm taking this off, dude. Come on. We've can made I this. Take them then? Yeah, you can take them. Like, take them to the. Yeah, yeah you can take them and get ready. Okay. And then they can also prep at the top of the hour for a three minute ad break.